Hey, folks. It is cool. It's a little breezy. It's cloudy. Rain moves in again tonight. I have dug out my fishing pole because here in Maine, open water season starts April 1st, so about a week. So I dug my fishing pole out. This is my, my second hand one. It's just a cheap backup. It is a Zebco 33. I like the old Johnson reels and Johnson poles. Hard to come by, the metal ones. But this right here is a nice backup. It's, it's a closed face. It's not an open face, which I have used. I'm not a big fan of the, the double reel handle at all, but for a backup, it's pretty good. Now, I wanted to make sure that the line was good. I wanted to make sure that when I cast, because the bog is open in just enough so I can cast out, I've got a, I've got a bobber hooked onto a swivel just to see if the line will go out as far as it will because the heavier the, the, the lure or bobber you've got on there, the further the line has, uh, has a tendency to go out, right? when considering. Um, I changed the line last fall before I put it up, so I just wanted to make sure that everything was all good. So main fishing license here is $25 for a year for open water. And if I live closer to the coast, I could use my my regular fishing license to fish like for mackerel and stuff. So if you can get a where the mackerel are biting, you can come home with a lot of mackerel folks to throw in a jar. So this here, I grew up with the fish pole in my hand, folks. But it's also, oh, <laughs> and I've got markers from here to here, I put a marker as six inches. That's the length of a lot of trout, brook trout, square tails in Maine. And then I'm assuming that is 14 inches for a salmon. Okay. And then you have the bass limit lengths and all of that. Um, but it's a good idea to get your, your pole out to go through it and make sure it's going to cast. Even if you had an old junky cracked bobber. Just attach that to your to your line and just practice on your lawn. If you're new to fishing, uh, it takes a little takes a little getting used to. It takes a little practice to be able to, to cast where you want. So I would recommend that you get a fishing pole that you are comfortable with and put a bobber on the end of that and practice put a put a spot on the lawn. Just take a a five gallon bucket lid or something put it on the lawn and just cast and see how close you can come to that that bucket lid within a very short period of time you can all, you can hit that that bucket lid just about every time right because if you see a a fish rise up sometimes they'll come up and they'll roll just on the surface sometimes they'll come up and get a a bug off the top of the surface right and sometimes it'll just jump you want to be able to if you want that fish you want to be able to aim your lure or your bait or your bobber within that general area right so if you know the fish is there within that area and if you've got the bait that it wants then you know It'll save you quite a few casts if you just practice, just practice, okay? Now, I used to fly fish years ago. I used to catch a lot of salmon on a fly rod. That's a lot of fun, folks. And when my eyes were better, I used to tie my own flies. That's just the main thing, right? It's just the main thing. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's not a main thing, but um, I was just brought up with the fish pole in my hand. But that's... You know, if, say your your fishing license is $25, like mine is here in Maine, that goes for a year, right? Um, if you go out and you catch fish, and you bring them home, 
and you either cook them up or you prepare them for the freezer or you dehydrate them or you throw them into a jar right and pressure can them for those of you who pressure can fish you know that it takes longer than it does meat right it takes longer than it does meat so make sure you check your book um, so just make sure that your your fishing gear is all set up and and make sure your line is changed make sure it's not tangled in there and if anybody is new to fishing I am not a pro but I am experienced and there are ways to work your reel there are ways to keep your reel in good shape that'll last long even for a Zebco 33 okay which they're they're a nice reel for the price they're, they're just my backup I prefer my Johnson so that is that I am getting anxious to catch some fish to put in jars I am I did walk up into my garden and about three quarter quarters of it is free of snow but there's still ice up there and the frost is still coming out so you know I'd be walking along on the ice and all of a sudden there's you know this much of a pocket underneath that so when you're walking on and it gives this free jarring on the back so I walked around my garden there's a lot of pickup a lot of pickup I pulled what I could off out of the dirt tomatoes sunflowers all that stuff um, but I want to talk about it's time to be a closet prepper folks it's time to it's time to go into the closet, not out of the closet, okay? So if you are preparing and you're stocking up and you're getting extra gas, you're getting extra oil, or extra filters, whatever, whatever you're stocking up on, right? Cannon jars, whatever. Now is more, it's more important now to keep your mouth quiet about what you're purchasing um, making sure if somebody comes into your house that they cannot see what you are prepping right yeah if somebody pulls into my door yet I'm coming right straight out of the house I don't want people being able to see what I have in there not that I have a lot either but you know even you know if it's family anybody on this row can come right in I, I wouldn't I wouldn't bother me a bit but Anybody I don't know or an acquaintance with, um, they don't need to go into my house. So anyway, um, now is the time, now that there has been an announcement, an official announcement, right, that there's going to be a food shortage, now is the time to be really quiet about your preps. And maybe even stock, uh, stop talking to other people about prepping. Because if you are talking to other people the importance of prepping, they're going to say, oh, well, that person is prepping. I'll just keep them in mind, right? So out of sight, out of mind, out of ear, out of thought, unless you're malicious. And then you're going to remember all these conversations that you've heard, right? Or that you've had, either one, right? So... But now is the time, now is the time to, as Edith Bunker would say, tick a lock, keep your mouth shut, right? So if you, if you prep, just be mindful. If you're starting to prep, it's not a cool idea to, to boast, okay? Or brag, it's not cool. It's not cool, that could, that could do you a whole lot of harm than a whole lot of good, right? So, um, I don't know. There's, there's a lot I want to say, but I just dug my fishing pole out, and I'm pleased with it. So, I'm going to go get my license within the next week. And, folks, I only check my mail once a week at the post office, okay? Only once a week. I've had a few people send me stuff. Thank you very, very much. It's, it's pretty nice. 
is pretty nice and and it was it was moving to me. It was moving. I was glad I was alone when I picked the picked the packages up and checked my mail because you know this tough old country girl is is a little bit sentimental. When somebody goes out of the way to do something very nice for me like that, I, I get touched right here, okay? I, I do. So thank you very much. And I'm grubbed out again today. I got this big old baggy sweatshirt on that likes to choke me. And so if any of you have never fished before and would like to learn something about the about casting, about basic equipment because I do everything basic here. I don't get into this fancy stuff. If I'm fishing for bass, I know exactly what the bass like around here. If I'm fishing for pickerel and pike, I know exactly what the pickerel and pike like around here. If I am brook fishing, I know exactly what they like. And the more the more you do it and the more you go out into the into the water or near the water, uh, you're gonna learn those things. And it's not going to hurt if you don't fish and you want to pick up fishing because that's a skill, right? That's a skill. That's free meat after you've bought your license and your gear, folks. That's free. Okay? Um, just ask anybody around or go to a sporting goods shop and, and ask them where the good places are. Ask them what fish there are and what they're taking for bait at that time. Okay? Now, people, you can get all fancied out with... With fishing gear, you can spend a lot of money. Back when I was a kid, a dollar twenty-five for a what I call a broken back rapella. No, no, they're they're over ten dollars now. And go with with that in mind that if you all you you could take that brand new ten dollar broken back rapella and you could your first cast you could get it tangled up and break your line and there goes ten dollars the first cast. So. Get what works for you, for that fish in your area, but you don't have to spend a lot of money. If you get one for $4 versus one with a, a bigger brand name for $10, please get the $4 one because one cast could do the $4 one in or the $10 one in, right? So go in mind that you could lose hooks, you could lose swivels, you could lose bobbers, you can lose, you could lose artificial bait, whatever, okay? Read your law book, know what there is here in this area. It's very tricky because there's rivers and one side of the river and stream and or stream. Um, is Indian territory okay now I am quite a bit bit Micmac Indian all right which might attribute to some of how I live I don't know um, but their rules are different for them okay on Indian land than it is for me and you don't want to stand on their bank and fish okay you've got to be on a certain side of the river and if you don't know exactly where you are and exactly where those lines are, you could get a huge fine, okay? But, and it's really tricky here. It's like 50 yards south of this and that and 150 feet from this and that. So it's like a, to me, it seems like a 10-foot square area that I could fish in there. So I don't even bother. It's just too much for me. So know your laws. If you want to learn a little bit more about the basic casting, the functions of a fishing reel. Now, if you're talking open-faced, I have no idea. I do know an open face because I have used them before. I have never owned one. But I have used them before, and they do seem to cast a lot further, folks. Okay? Um, but if you want to know basics on a closed reel, I can... There's, there's the drag to... There's, there's the tension, there's, there's all kinds of stuff, but it's very basic. Once you get to know the reel, you can figure that out after after you just know what each function is. Um, 
I can I can go through my reel if you would like. The important thing is if you don't want to lose a lot of your fishing equipment, which you're going to anyway, that's just the nature of the game, is to get your pole and practice casting with a bobber on it. All right? And the reason I say a bobber is because if you put a hook on there and you're, you're casting out on the lawn, right, or maybe on a pie plate or a bucket lid or something, that hook is just going to, that hook is just going to, grab onto anything and everything unless you put a cap on that hook which you can do right you can put a styrofoam ball on there but it's going to be up to you you can figure that out but after you've bought your fishing license for whatever cost it is and you've bought the gear then all the fish you catch as long as you do it legally because if you do it illegally and you get caught there's the fines involved in that right for providing you follow the fishing laws, that's free fish, folks. That's free fish. Now, a lot of you may not like fish. I know a lot of people that do not like fish. But if it came down to feeding your belly, or you couldn't afford protein and your body needs protein, right? Then fish would be a good one. So, I happen to like fish. Pickerel is my, pickerel and pike are my absolute absolute favorite fish then comes the white perch and the horn pout trout i've eaten so much trout throughout my life folks i don't care if i ever eat another trout again in my life i still go trout fishing and i just bring it up to my stepdad and he eats it so that is that don't brag about your preps be very very secret protect it like it's worth a million dollars and just do what you can, folks. Do what you can, all right? Again, think about fishing. If you don't fish, just, you don't have to have a fancy boat. You don't have to have a kayak. You don't have to have a canoe. You don't have to have a pontoon boat. You don't have to have a paddle boat. You don't ha you can find, as long as it's fishing is permitted, you can stand on the bank and catch something, folks, all right? Something. So, and always pick up your trash. When you're done, pick up your trash. Make sure you, whatever you bring out, you bring back with you, okay? So I guess that is it today. Um, maybe I'll get back on and show you my very basic uh, tackle box. It is so basic, folks, but I catch a lot of fish with those basic, just those basic supplies, okay? Maybe I'll do that today. I don't know. I have dug it out and I have gone through it. And I do know that I need some more swivels if I go trout fishing. I know that I've got everything I need for bass. Um, pickerel, like chain pickerel. Um, everything for like perch. And I've got everything I need for trout, but if I do more trout fishing, I need more swivels. And I don't know if I just said that or not. But I've got my steel leaders, because if you catch pike, the pike, and even pickerel, if you catch them with just a, a hook and a swivel, or maybe you don't even use a swivel, I do, and a line and a pike teeth, get on that line, it's going to snap that line, folks. That's why you need a a steel swivel okay just a heavy duty one heavy duty one so they can't chew through it and cut your line all right so that's all i've got for right now if you like anything i have to say you can hit like if you're not subscribed you can subscribe if you know of anybody that wants to listen to a lady in the in the woodshed and and Maybe a snowbank. The snowbanks are getting smaller here, so um, then you can you can share them anything that you think they might like. But the most important thing I want to say is fish can be pretty inexpensive if you catch it yourself. It's a lot of fun, and be careful of your preps. Okay, just be careful of your preps. Take a lock. Thank you.